It's me, Megamind, and I'm working on an indie metroidvania game I've codenamed Field of Masonette. Not sure if that'll be the actual name, but that's what we're calling it for now. Now, what is Field of Masonette, you might be wondering? It's a metroidvania that takes place in a haunted mansion. In this mansion, you meet a ghost cat who wants you to help him retrieve the magic keys to open a door to a mysterious room that he believes his dead owners to be in. He also informs you that an evil spirit has taken over the mansion that he needs your help to defeat. He explains that he's been living in the mansion ever since he died, trying to find his dead owners and protect the place to the best of his abilities. Now, that's all the lore without getting into spoilers, so what will you be doing in this game? Well, you have skills which are basically magical spells or attacks you can unlock through crafting. You also have various abilities that are represented by playing cards. These abilities can be anything from a magical attack, summoning a ghost to fight for you, or a stat modifier like plus one damage or anything like that. You'll be able to equip many of these abilities, so you're highly incentivized to build your character with certain ability and skill combinations to fit your needs in the game. These abilities are also obtained through crafting. Speaking of crafting, you can use items retrieved from killing enemies or found around the map to create these abilities and skills. So as you can probably guess, this game highly incentivizes farming. There'll be plenty of spots specifically designed with farming in mind where you can find exclusive items to that area. So this game mostly focuses on exploring the mansion, farming, and crafting abilities and skills to aid you on your journey through the mansion to get the keys by defeating bosses. Optimization is highly encouraged, especially with things like speedrunning. If you're interested in speedrunning, it is highly encouraged in this game. You'll need to learn the best ability and skill combinations to use to your advantage to explore the mansion in the fastest, most efficient way possible. Now, what have I done with the game so far? Well, I'll go ahead and show you. You can see I start out on this little area of the mansion. This will kind of be the entrance. There's going to be a giant door here, but I haven't really drawn that yet. You'll see these little instructions floating around. I didn't want some NPC to tell you, like, the controls and stuff, because I didn't really want to take the player away from the game. So they're just kind of there, so if you have played this game before, they're not really in your way. They're just, they're just there. And as you can see, um, if I fall down here, it respawns me back here. But if I make it to the other side, then it respawns me back there. I just thought that was a really cool uh, idea. And now you can see we have these lamps that we can light. And if I go ahead and light that, uh, that actually saves the game. So if I leave the game and hit play again, it'll respawn me right back here with all the same stuff. Now if I go here, you'll see the first enemies that I've got. These are the Reapers. Uh, they'll probably be the first enemies that you fight. Uh, I don't know, I'm probably not done with these guys yet, but you can see they're decently difficult. Uh, they just kind of fly around and then charge at you while also falling back. That's kind of what they do. They're a little sporadic and they have a good bit of RNG, so each fight is usually never the same. Uh, but that's about it for now. Uh, I might release public bill this, not sure, but... Yeah, this is kind of everything. Now, back to you, t uh, me from the future. Thanks, me from a few seconds ago. Now, as you can see, I don't have the inventory, crafting, or any abilities coded in. The only skill that was there is the floating sword skill thingy that you saw in the video. It will likely be the first skill you receive. I'm planning on working on the inventory and abilities after I upload this video, so it might be a bit before I get another video ready. But if you want to stay up to date on my progress, you can join the Discord server. It's kind of a mix between a game dev server and an art server of my original animated series. But everyone is welcome, and you can share your stuff on there, chat, get help with game dev stuff, etc. I'm pretty active in there, so don't be shy to say hi. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> from here on out, I'm just gonna be talking about random things from the game. So, the difficulty, I'm planning on this game being decently difficult. I don't really want to cater to people who aren't as good at video games, so it's gonna be decently difficult, but not like Dark Souls difficult. It's the enemy is going to have decently complicated AI. I wanted them to be very interesting, so you're going to be farming these guys for quite a bit. This is why I chose the difficulty to be like this, so it'll be decently difficult with enemies with decently complicated AI. So each fight feels interesting, even though you'll be farming them. Another thing I'd like to talk about is the music. I'll probably be making all the music for this game. I've got a SoundCloud. The link will probably be in the description if I don't forget. And, um... If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to be join the Discord. <laughs> That's just the best way. And if you notice, there's not that much in the game right now. 
Uh, as you could probably see by the footage, that's pretty much everything I've gotten in the game right now. I'm planning on working on the inventory system, and that's going to take quite a while because it's decently complicated. Well, that's it from your pal Megamind for now. I'll see you folks later. Stay crispy.